we've already seen simplifying nth roots, square roots, cube roots. We've seen that in the basic sense that if you take the square root of a number or the cube root of a number, you are left with uh, another number, whether it be a real number or an integer. And we have to be careful because not everything we work with is a perfect square. So we've, we've seen nice numbers like <clears throat> 16, 25, 100, 49. We see all these nice numbers that we've been working with that are perfect squares. You can take the square root of them. Same thing with perfect cubes. We have 8, 27, 64. We have these numbers that we've been using because they are nice numbers. We can take the cube roots. But we're going to be getting into different numbers that are not perfect cubes or not perfect squares, but that doesn't mean we can't simplify them. So the first example here that I have is the square root of 50. And the square root of 50, what we need to do here is, well, we can't, it's not a perfect square. 50 cannot be written as something squared. But what we can do, using what's called the multiplication property of radicals, the square root of 50, well, we can write 50 as 25 times 2. So underneath, and let's write 50 as 25 times 2. The property that we're allowed to use allows us to write this as, and split it up as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And maybe I'll write the general property up here. A, B. The square root of A, B can be broken apart as the square root of A times the square root of B. So if we have a product underneath the square root, we can break that up as the product of those square roots. And we can actually go the other way as well. If we have the square root of A times the square root of B, as long as both of them are defined, meaning the square root of A is a real number and the square root of B is a real number, you can go this way as well. So either way is fine. However, breaking it apart is what's going to help us here. So by taking 50, writing it as 25 times 2, we can split each one of those up into the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And we can see that that is equal to 5. And the square root of 2 can't be simplified, so we get 5 root 2. You may be asking yourself, well, why didn't I break up 50 as, let's say, the square root of 10 times 5? Well, we could do that. We could have the square root of 10 times the square root of 5. That's also equivalent to the square root of 50. These are equivalent. Square root of 50 is equivalent to square root of 10 times square root of 5. It's also equivalent to 5 times square root of 2. The reason that this didn't help us is because by breaking 50 into 10 and 5, neither one of those, 10 or 5, could be written, or either one of those are not perfect squares. So we can't simplify them into a nice rational number, nice integer. So by breaking it into 10 and 5, it didn't really help us too much. However, 25, that was a perfect square, and it is also divides 50. So that's what we're looking to do. This example down here, where we have the square root of 8 times x squared times y to the 6. First of all, when you see this over here, assume all variables are positive or they're greater than or equal to zero. That just allows us to, instead of taking the square root and having to worry about the absolute value, we don't have to worry about the absolute value. This is just telling us when you take the square root of a variable, you're always going to get, if you're, you're always going to get a positive number pretty much. That's what we're doing here. When we take the square root, we don't have to worry about the square root of x2 or x squared or the square root of um, y to the 6 because they will result in positive numbers. So what we need to do is somehow, if we can, take the square root of each one of these parts, break it apart, and see if they can be simplified. So we'll have to look at each one of these, pro these factors here, 8, x squared and y to the 6 and determine if they are perfect squares. We're talking about squares because the index is 2. If they are perfect squares, then we can take the square root of it. If they are not perfect squares, our goal will be to break them into a, the product of perfect squares. So first, let's just take the square root 
And anything that is a perfect square, we can leave alone. So 8. Is 8 a perfect square? When you take the square root of 8, do you get a nice integer? And the answer is no, you don't. But a perfect square that div does divide 8 is 4. So we can write 8 as 4 times 2. And now we are okay with 8. We worried about 8. We broke it into the product of, t of a perfect square times something that's not a perfect square. x squared, is that a perfect square? Well, you'll see here that anything that has an index, or excuse me, an exponent, if the index, which in this case our index is 2, if the index divides the exponent, then it will be a perfect, well, whatever the index is. And the reason why here is this. What we're doing, when we're taking the square root of x squared, we know that that's the same as x squared raised to the one-half power. So if 2 times one-half, when you multiply those out, you get x. So as long as this index here, which in this case was 2, if it divides this exponent and gives us a nice number, then we will have a perfect square. So in this case, x squared is a perfect square. We can keep it as x squared. y to the 6. Does the index 2, does 2 divide 6, the exponent? And the answer is yes. 6 is divisible by 2. So x to the, or excuse me, y to the 6 is also a perfect square. So just from this step to this step, I broke what was not a perfect square, 8. I broke it so it, it broke it into two factors, so one of them was a perfect square. And y to, or y to the 6 and x squared, they, I found, were to be perfect squares, so I left them the same. Now I can take every single one of these factors here that's being multiplied and split that into in their individual perfect squares, or excuse me, their square roots. And when you do that, now we can go through, and anything that is a perfect square, and let's underline what is a perfect square. The square root of 4 can be simplified, the square root of x squared, and the square root of y to the 6. So they're going to be 2, because the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 2 cannot be simplified, so we're going to leave that as the square root of 2. The square root of x squared, well, remember when you take the nth root of x to the n, if it's an even integer or an even index, you get the absolute value. But remember, we're assuming that all the variables are positive, so we don't have to worry about the absolute value. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of y to the 6. Well, if you take this exponent and divide it by the index, you get 3. So the square root of y to the 6 is y to the 3rd. And the last thing I want to do is just anything that is not under the square root sign, under a radical bar, I'm going to bring up front. And anything that is under a radical bar, I will just put at the end. And the reason why I do that is because you just want to be careful here. There's a tendency to take this radical bar and extend it a little further than you need to. But if all of the terms that are not under the radical bar are in the beginning here, then we don't no, there's not a chance of a mistake there. Let's do two more examples. Let's find the square root or simplify the square root of 98 z to the fifth x to the seventeenth. Remember, we're looking for perfect squares, in this case perfect squares because our index is 2. Perfect squares underneath the radical bar, and if they are not radical bars, or if, excuse me, if they're not perfect squares, then what we're looking for is to break that into the product where one of those is a perfect square. So when you take the square root of 98, you do not get a nice number. You're going to get somewhere, something between a 9 and a 10, closer to 10. So we're not going to get anything nice. We're going to get 9 point something. So we need to find a perfect square that does divide 98. And in this case, 98 can be rewritten as 49 times 2. There are other perfect, I mean, there are other ways that we can write 98. 98 can be written as 17, or excuse me, um, 
it can be written as 14 times 7. But notice 14 and 7, neither one of those can be taken nicely and taken the square root nicely. So we're looking for a nice breakdown of 98, which in this case 49 is what we're looking for. Z to the fifth. That is not a perfect square because 5 is not divisible by 2. However, I can find the largest exponent that goes into 5 that is divisible by 2. And in this case, if I have z to the 4th, well, we know z to the 4th goes into z to the 5th. right? If, we, if you take z to the 5th and divide it by z to the 4th, you'll get z. So z to the 4th divides z to the 5th. And think about what's left over. When you take z to the 4th out of z to the 5th, you're left with just 1z. So what we're looking for is the largest even exponent, really, that goes into or that is less than 5. Same thing here. 17 is not divisible by the index 2. But if we're looking for the largest number of x's that divide x to the 17th, that would be x to the 16th. And that is a perfect square because 16 is divisible by this 2. And how many x's are left over? Just 1. And now anything that you, know, you can see here, we can break these all into their individual square roots. And I didn't write it on this page, but we're going to assume that all the variables are positive doesn't really affect us too much in this problem. Anything that is a perfect square, 49, z to the 4th, x to the 16th, we're going to rewrite. So we have 7, this will be z squared, and this will be x to the 8th. And anything that is not, let me erase that and rewrite that, that's x to the 8th. And here we have the square root of 2, that's not going to be simplified. The square root of z and the square root of x. And remember the last step that I'll do, anything that's not under the square root, I'll bring up front. So we have 7z squared x to the 8th. And anything that is under the square root, the product rule says I can combine these all under the same square root. So 2zx can be combined. All right. So now what I would like to do is in this particular case, uh, this example down here, I would like to break this apart, but not so we have perfect squares, but so we have perfect cubes. So now I'm looking for numbers that are perfect cubes, and I'm also looking for particular exponents that are divisible by 3. Not divisible by 2, but divisible by 3. So is 27, or excuse me, negative 27, is that a perfect cube? Well, the answer is yes. So we don't have to break apart. We don't have to break apart negative 27. That's already a perfect cube. X to the third, three is divisible by the index here, right? The exponent is divisible by the index. So that's already a perfect cube. And finally, seven is not divisible by three. So a number that's less than seven, or the largest number that's less than seven and divisible by three is six. So a y to the 6, which would leave us one y left over. And the reason we're doing that, we're looking for a perfect cube that divides y to the 7th. Well, a perfect cube that divides y to the 7th is going to have an exponent of 6. So now we can see the exponent is divisible by the index. And when you take a y to the 6 out, you're left with just one y. Now we can rewrite all these terms into their oops, this is the cube root, we can break all these into their separate cube roots and then from there we can simplify them. So the cube root of negative 27, well that's negative 3, the cube root of x to the third is x, the cube root of y to the sixth, well 6 divided by 3 gives us 2, so this is y squared, and the cube root of y cannot be simplified. So anything that is under the cube root will be brought out to the back. Anything that is not will be brought to the front. And it looks like this is already set up nice for us. I'm just going to rewrite it so we have some space over here. That is our solution. 
So just again to summarize, we're looking to break apart expressions, radical expressions, into perfect squares or perfect cubes, depending on what our index is. And if whatever's under the radical bar is not a perfect square or a perfect cube, then we want to break that particular number or that expression so it's the product of a perfect square or a perfect cube.